Welcome to section 8.5c. All right, general people, what we're going to do is we're going to continue our discussion from last lecture. So it would be a good idea to refresh yourself on some of the ins and outs of the problem, but just to do a quick little reminder, what we're trying to do is we are trying to titrate a weak acid with NaOH. In the particular problem we set up, we have 25 mils of 1.0 molar acetic acid, and to that, we are using a one molar solution of our strong base NaOH. What we established in our last lecture was that 25 mils is our equivalence point. And last lecture, what we did is we calculated the pH before the equivalence point. So this is going to be our second scenario. What I'm going to do is calculate the pH at the equivalence point. So remember, the equivalence point means that I have equal moles of acid and base. And it is going to be the same type of methodology with some nuances. I'm going to break this into two parts. I'm going to do a stoichiometry problem, which means I'm going to run a surf table. And I'm also going to do an equilibrium problem, which means I'm going to run through an ice table. So the first part of this problem is the surf table. And it's going to be exactly like the surf table we did for before the equivalence point. I'm going to identify my major species, which means it's acetic acid, OH minus, Na plus, and H2O. From here, we know our strongest acid is our acetic acid, and OH minus is our strongest base. So we know that these two react. They react completely. And so this is why I start out with my stoichiometry problem. I draw the hard arrow for my reaction of my acetic acid reacting with my OH minus. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my surf table. I'm going to start with my starting amounts. This is going to be S in my surf table. So remember, surf table, we have to use moles. So I'm going to take the molarity times the volume to get the moles. So for my acetic acid, the molarity was one molar, the volume 25 mils. And so I get 0 0.025 moles for that. And I'm going to do the same for my OH minus. My OH minus comes from NaOH. I know my molarity is one molar. And then remember, at the equivalence point, I've added 25 mils of this one molar. So 0 0.025 again. I have no acetate here, so zero moles. And of course, we don't care about water. So I'm just going to write happy face down the line. So let's go ahead and do our reaction, our R. And our R is going to be based off our limiting reagent. But at the equivalence point, I have equal moles. So that means both of these things are going to be my limiting reagent. So that means I'm going to subtract 0 0.025 moles from each one of my reactants, and I'm going to add plus 0 0.025 to my products. After my reaction takes place, I can calculate F, my final amount. I'm going to chew up both of these two things because they're both limiting reagents, and I'm going to have acetate left over. Now, this completes my stoichiometry problem. Before we get to the ice problem, let's do a quick quiz question. I want you to tell me, after I finish this surf table, what is going to be the major species at the equivalence point? So after the surf table, when I start setting up my ice table, what are the things that I'm going to care about? All right, general people, to answer this question, let's go back to this slide. What I will notice is that before my surf table, these were my major species. But you can see that after my surf table, I have chewed up all of my acetic acid and I've chewed up all of my OH minus. That's what the equivalence point means. I've added equal amounts of these acids and bases and they've reacted together. Together. So I no longer have those two things. However, I generated something new. I generated acetate. 
And so if I want to write all the major species after my surf table, well, it's going to be everything that I have left over. So my Na+, my H2O, and it is also going to be the acetate that I produce during the course of that surf table. So that's why these are the major species at the equivalence point. Now, once I've finished my surf table, this is what I have left over. And so this is what I'm going to base my ice table off of. If this is what I'm going to base my ice table off of, the only thing that is going to affect pH, well, it's not going to be water because water is neutral. It's not going to be Na+. What it's going to be is acetate. And so now what I have to do is I have to do an ice table off of acetate. So what is acetate? Well, acetate is the conjugate base of acetic acid. Acetate is a weak base. Now I'm going to go ahead and write down my base reaction. So acetate is a base, so it's going to interact with water to give me acetic acid plus OH minus. Now I want to do an ice table because like I said, this is the second part to the problem, I, C, and E. Now remember, for an ice table, we want to plug in molarities. So let's go ahead and look at our surf table results. So in our surf table, we calculated the moles of acetate. It was 0 0.025 moles. So I want to divide by the total volume. And so remember the total volume, 25 mils plus 25 mils. So what I'm going to do is take 0 0.025 moles, divide it by the total volume, which is going to be 50 milliliters or 0 0.05 liters. This gets me a concentration of 0.5 molar. So this is my new concentration of acetate. Now, look at what the concentrations of acetic acid are. I chewed it up, so this is at zero molar, and I have zero molar of OH minus. So now let's go plug those values in. So we calculated the concentration of our acetate, which is 0 0.5 molar. Water is something that I don't care about, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw a line down the middle. I just showed you guys that my acetic acid had zero moles and my OH minus zero moles, so both of these are zero in concentration. Since I have zeros on my product side, plus, plus, and minus, everything is in a one-to-one -one ratio, so X is across the board. 0 0.5 minus x, x, and x. Now take a look at this. This isn't an acid reaction. This is a base reaction. So I need to find Kb, and I can do that by taking Kw and dividing it by the Ka I find on my table. So I get 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, looking at the Ka of acetic acid. I know that this is going to equal my products. That's going to be x squared divided by my reactants, 0 0.5 minus x. So let's crank out some math. So this becomes 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10th. This is a very small Kb, so I can use an approximation. This is going to equal x squared over 0 0.5. So I can calculate x, and x becomes 0 0.00001658. But remember what this x equals. This equals my OH minus concentration. So what I can do is I can take the negative log of this. The negative log of this is going to be my pOH. So I can just plug this value in, and then I get a pOH of 4.78. So the last thing I want to do is I want to calculate pH. 
and pH is going to be 14 minus my pOH, or in this case, 14 minus 4.78, which gets me a pH of 9.22. Now I want you guys to take a look at that number. This is the pH at the equivalence point. So after our ice table, we calculated the pH at the equivalence point. It's 9.2. This is not pH 7. When I reach the equivalence point with something that is a weak acid and a strong base, I'm going to be basic at the equivalence point and I'm not going to be neutral. And the reason that is, is the major species left over in solution is going to be the conjugate base of that acid. And so the conjugate base is going to make that solution basic. All right, gentle people, I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe.